we want to begin tonight's service with a motivational moment from Pastor Rush. Check it out. Good morning. This is Pastor Ricky Rush, and I want to thank you for joining me with another motivational moment. Okay, I have a grandson, right? And I let him listen to a song. Now, don't y'all hold this against me. It was a song called I Want You Back by Michael Jackson. He heard it on his MP3. My daughter first heard that song on a CD. But I first heard that song on a 45. <laughs> yeah, some of you don't know what this is, okay? And that's okay. But it's how I first heard ABC. Listen to me. Things have changed, but you still have the most beautiful, wonderful music coming from you. Sometimes it's not how you hear something. It's the message that it leaves behind. Some songs stay with us forever. Some memories stay with us forever. Something that you're doing in life right now is going to stay with some people forever. So if you're a 45 person, CD person, or an MP4 person, you're still a great person. I hope that you don't think that because you're getting older, your music, the sound of your heart, is outdated. Keep living. God bless you. The Inspiring Body of Christ Church is an anointed ministry where we use the Word of God to win souls for the Kingdom of God. We are fishers of men and our church is uniquely equipped with the largest privately owned aquarium in the world. All of the marine life that you see in our tanks have to go through a time of quarantine. So here is a recap of our previous episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. When you're going through it, it feels like if God loved it all, he wouldn't be doing this to you. Here's the answer. He's not doing this to you. He's allowing you to go through it because you qualify. And God knows the next round, you're not going to throw in the towel. You want, Well, whatever happened to her and him? And they live worse than me. But they would throw in the towel. You wouldn't. They will quit. You won't. They will go right there, hand to hand, and say, no mas, no mas. God knows it. You're not going to say no mas because you're going to get more and more and more. And you know that your faith increases. Yes, you're going to cry. People are going to boo. They're going to yell because this round, you're not throwing any punches. It's like, come on, give us a fight. And God has said, no, just last the round. Sometimes you just got to keep your guards up. You got to take a punch, take a punch, take a punch. People will boo. They say, you're coward, you're chicken. You need to fight back. God said, no, you need to hold on for a minute. I'm building up something because when you throw your next punch, let me tell you something in fighting you can either knock them out or win by points and some people tonight that need the prayer you're you're behind on points the only the only thing you got left is a knockout punch you got one punch left but you can't throw that punch if you throw in the towel first Another episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. Father, in Jesus' name, somebody's listening today. And God, they, 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 they may have been intrigued with hearing what Pastor Rush is going to say. But God, while you have their attention for a moment, I just beg you, please, Lord, to speak to their hearts and, and let somebody else hear you in their hearts, in their ears, so that they can have the faith that cometh by hearing. I thank you tonight for everyone who gave some time tonight to say, I'm going in and I'm going to listen to God's word. And I thank you so much, Master, that you love us enough to care for us to not just give us a little word, but a bunch of word. Because we know we need a lot to get through times of trials and tribulations that this world is going through. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
All right, this is how we roll. This is how we roll. Now, I don't mean to get common with you, but I'm just used to preaching in the building by myself, so it's okay. And so if, 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 you, if you take us away from all the people, you can't take us away from the passion we have from God, okay? So I want every believer to know that. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your status or your situation is. God can speak to you wherever you are, whenever, whenever you need a word from him. And that's what we've been talking about. We've talked about the world system, which is why I had this black cloth up here. The world system versus the word system. And all of us have always operated in the world system. We grew up in the world system. And so sometimes growing up, people would say, you know, you're not supposed to be in the world and of the world and all of that. And we understand that. But there was a way that we used to function by the world system. It was when you wanted money. It's when you lusted for different things. It's when you begged for different things. It's when you developed your hate and your unforgiveness. We grew up in the world system. We grew up in a very, 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 very different dark system over here. And then we decided one day we wanted to go to heaven. We wanted to see Jesus. And so we had to learn to live in the word system. We had to be born again, give our lives to Jesus. And after that, you had to start eating on the word of God. And then when you started giving your life to Jesus, you, you, you were trying to figure out, now, how am I going to do this Jesus thing and God thing when I got so much world in me? And it was a struggle. And it is, it is always a struggle for man because the world is not somewhere way out of space. You, the world is just like that. You know, before you turn, there's something about the world that can influence you, something about the world that can entice you. But as we start living by the word, we realize that the word is based, the word system is based on faith. And so faith is kind of crazy, man. It's like doing something without any proof that it's going to get done. See, I could end, I could end the money school right there. That, see, that's faith. Some people say, well, 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 you, you got to do something so, so people will understand what you, God says. Do something with no evidence that I'm going to do something, and that's faith. God said, step once, step first. If you just step out, I'll provide the step. God says, if you'll just move, I'll provide the step. And so some people say, that's nonsense, that's crazy. I know because we've been used to living by the world system and the world can build things up and the just shall live by faith. And that's how we're here tonight. And I talked yesterday about this wonderful event that happened back in 1980. There was a fight between two uh, boxers and they were, they were going for it. And the famous two Spanish words were introduced to the world. The words were, no mas, no mas. Roberto, Roberto Duran. You see me roll that like that? Mm -hmm. Roberto Duran had a fight with a guy named Sugar Ray. You get it? Roberto Sugar Ray. Figure it out. You got two different people from two different parts of the world. During the fight, Sugar Ray was fighting and throwing it at him. This was our second fight. And so at, at some point during that fight, uh, Duran turned away from Leonard and turned toward the referee and he said, no mas, no mas. And when he said no mas, he, he, he didn't wait until the round was over. He didn't wait for the trainer to stop the fight. He just turned around and said, no mas, no mas. I can't take no more of this. And he said it in his language. He was a fierce fighter. He was a tough fighter. But, but, but as this young fighter was putting pressure on him, Duran said, no mas. In the boxer's early days, a prize fighter, in the early days of boxing, he would sit in the corner. They called him. A guy had a, a, a corner man in his corner. And the corner man's job was to make sure that he wiped the blood and sweat off of his fighter. And so if that fighter was in trouble, he would take that same sponge and just throw it in and said, we don't want any more of this fight. It's the, the, the sponge is just an antiseptic way of saying, I quit. But Duran, during that fight, he didn't wait on the towel. He didn't wait on the corner, man. He just said, I'm out. I wonder how many of us signed up to be in this fight for Christianity. And when your opponent, the enemy, realized that you really, really, really were serious about being in the prize fight of your life, he started throwing punches that you were not able to see coming. See, it's all right if there's a punch coming and you see it and you can duck it and you can hit it and you can block it. 
but there's a, every once in a while a punch that you don't see coming. I think COVID-19 was a punch that we just didn't see coming. We talked about God making a way out of no way and God, you know, you can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. Now the whole world, everything we love is taken away. A punch that we didn't see coming. And somebody said, no mas. And the enemy has been waiting on all believers, I guarantee you, to say we quit. We quit. Every day of your life, you get into the ring. And I'll just repeat what I said so we can keep moving. And you've got two choices. You'll get up tomorrow and one of your choices is going to be to quit. To give up. To pack it up. Throw in the flag. Throw in the sponge. That's one of your choices. Everyone has that choice every day. But your next choice is going to be to maybe get knocked down. Maybe, maybe get a little bloodied. And you find yourself knocked down and you find yourself bloodied. And I know I'm talking to somebody who's listening right now. And you may have already made up in your mind, man, you don't know what, what you're talking about that I'm going through. No, but God knows that you're listening. And so you may find yourself right now hit face down on the mat. And your second choice is going to be get off the mat. Your second choice is going to be to fight another round. You know why? You don't give up. You don't give in. Instead, you get up. You don't throw the towel in. Instead, as weak as you are, God provides you the strength. Somebody hear me. To throw another punch. You, <laughs> you thought I don't understand. I don't even understand how I made it through the last round. And here I am today. Here I am now throwing a punch. What, what's wrong with me? He, he, he sort of increased your strength while you were flat on your back. You either give in, give up. Or give out. And you don't do either. And it is frustrating to the enemy when you don't. You keep swinging and punching and fighting until the bell sounds. And God knows that in just a minute, he knows how much you can bear. Listen to me. He knows how much you can bear. And you got to remember, your God, your trainer has the bell. Bing! That's enough. That's all my boy can handle right now. Bing! That's all my girl can handle right now. Bing! That's all my child can handle right now. And then God says, what I want you to do is go to the corner and I want you to sit down. Now, why is this so important tonight? Because in the corner is where you get some instructions. And that in your old life used to be maybe a club, a party. You know, that's where you get your little motivation. But now as a believer, you go to your corner and folks see us sitting down in something called the church. Why? Because now we're getting some instructions through what? The word of God on what to do tomorrow. Because tomorrow is still going to come and there's going to be another fight. There's going to be another struggle. There's going to be another reason to give up. But if you just sit down and listen, hallelujah, if you just sit down and listen to God's word. He'll give you some instructions for the next round. So if I'm the devil now, what I want to do is to prevent two things. One, I can't let you make it back to that corner. I can't because every time that joker gets to that corner, he comes out with another punch. Every time she gets to that corner, she comes out with another praise. Man, when COVID-19 hit, you know what that did? That took us out of the corner. What are we going to do Sunday? I got to go to Sunday to get my praise on. I got to go to church to get my offering. I, I got to go to church to get my inspiration. I, I don't feel right if I don't get my service in. And the enemy said, well, what if I hit you with something so hard that you couldn't get to your corner? Now what you going to do? You, you need to have so much word in you that when the devil decides that you have no church building, no church people, no church support, That, that, that was the plan. That was the plan. And people started falling away from church all over the country now. God, if you really cared, wouldn't you do something? God, if you were who you say you were, wouldn't you do something? God, why is this so important? Why must I get there? And God started to show us, hey, you're going to get there, but you've been trying to make it now. And you need some nutrients. 
I know you're vegetarian. I know this stuff messed with your mind so bad now you're going vegan. And you don't know you're vegan, really vegan, because you want to eat something that tastes like a hamburger. Either you want a hamburger or you don't. I, I, but that's a whole nother story. Oh, no, it's just like a hamburger. Well, if it's just like a hamburger. Okay. But we need, we need our word. And, you, and the devil give you something that's just like a word. Really? Oh, no, it's just like a word. It can, it can make you feel inspiring. But will it make you forgive? Oh, no, it's just like a word. It can make you feel tough. But will it make you love? Okay. So what God showed us here is there's a reason why we're here today. There's a reason why we're here on Sundays. There's a reason why we are on social media every single day. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, just giving word, word, word. Not my opinion. Not my ideas. Not something that you can debate, but something that God said, just put it out there. Because you can't make people eat it. You can't make people have it. You can't make people want it. God says there are two ways that you can lead people. One, you can manipulate them. Try to make deals all the time. Two, you can just inspire them. And God says, if you just get my word in you, my word will inspire you because you'll find yourself saying, Lord, I've been here in the Bible, but one day you'll grow up and say, God, I'm going to try this thing. I'm, I'm really going to try it. I'm going to try the word the next time I'm tempted to do something crazy. Next time I'm really tempted to do something weird, I'm going to try your word. And then you become inspired because all of a sudden you want to hate, but you can't. You want to quit. You really want to quit, but you can't. And you may have quit, but you're still moving like a fighter. If you quit, get out the ring. No, I can't. No, I can't get out the ring. <laughs> and sometimes the reason the enemy is still fighting you so much is because you say, I'm done. But you're still in the ring. You, you'll get that after Halloween. So God showed us this little illustration that we did yesterday with young people. And so here you are. And I got to walk through this real quick because I still have to get to the subject of tonight. Because there's something that God is still talking to us about while we're going through this time when he says, I got to shut you up. I got to shut you down. I got to wipe you out because I'm sick of you. Because every time you say something, you change lives. The devil says you just keep changing lives every time you speak God's word. Now, if you just talk something else, I will cut you some slack. But the just shall live by faith, and faith cometh by hearing God's word. Pastor, we know this. We know this. I know we know this. We know this. This is nothing new. It's just something that has to be continued. Because every time you use some word, you need some more word. Every time I take this water, if I drink a little bit, something is gone. So eventually, I'm taking little sips. It's emptying. And eventually, I'm going to need another bottle. Matter of fact, this was so good, I might need another bottle. <laughs> but anyway, so, so we, 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 God showed us this. If, if you're listening tonight on the internet, please don't leave us. Please, please, please stay with us. Hear God, okay? Whatever thing else is going on with you, hear God. Just hear him. So we, we think about us, and, and we, we had this thing where God was showing us that all of us, I don't care who you are, I don't care how long you've been a Christian, you know, everybody, you don't know what this is. It's a, it's a washboard, and it's an old tool that we use to explain how people would wash clothes. And I can go through the motions of washing clothes all I want to. I can give stories about it. I can encourage other people to do it and all of that stuff. But all I need to wash some clothes, the missing ingredient here is some water. And since you saw me with this water, I can pour this on here and say, now, I'm going to wash all these clothes. I emptied all that water out. And the first thing you would realize is he's messing with himself because... That's not enough water. And that's exactly why we're here tonight. Because somebody received the word five years ago, ten years ago. I know the word. I know the word. You do know the word. You did have the word. But I think it may have gotten absorbed in so many of our world issues and things that happened that this needs to be clean. And we have the right ingredient. We have the word. But we don't have enough. Okay, then. Then I'll get me another bottle. Okay. Okay. See, and, and it just depends on how many clothes you want to wash. That, that, that just sucked it right up. Okay, 
So, okay, and because we can't keep you here all night, if you're really serious about washing, if you really want to get that clean, you got to go ahead and get away from that bottle and say, God, look here, I need. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's the kind of word I need right there, God. I need something that's heavy enough to, 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 to lift me out of everything I'm going through. God, I have some word. And, and when I first poured this in there, that it, it looked like enough. But as I started moving the sheets around, you can tell it looked like enough, but it sucked it up. All of a sudden, I have some word, but I don't have enough word. That's all right. That's why we come back tonight. Because God said, the reason the devil is kicking you so much is because he's trying to get all that word out of you. And God said, I will supply your every need because I know. I know what's next. And you're thinking, God, why do I need so much water? God said, because there's about to be some drought. God says, because the enemy understands that you got all the formalities, you got all the talk, but what you're going to really need at this present stage of your life, when this virus hit, when this plague hit, when the world was hit and we got separated, some people said, oh, I'm all right. I went to church last Sunday. Now, last Sunday for some people has been seven months. And after a while... We don't know how to wait on the Lord anymore because our strength is gone. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're here tonight. And there was a guy who God called, uh, the, the, some people call God's favorite. His name was Job. And we know the story of Job. And I just want to tell it in about a minute. Watch this. He was a guy who had everything. The devil got mad at him because God always used Job as an example. At some point in your life, God will say, if there's anybody that can take the hell that's about to go down, it might be you. God might be calling your name tonight, telling the devil, if you really want to see what it means to mess with somebody, to take them out, then I want you to notice my servant, Job. So he, he said, yeah, but that's because Job got it made. Job got a lot of stuff. Job got it down. Job got a good children go Job got good uh, a family and all of that and I'm telling the story real fast it's in the book of Job <laughs> so I'm telling it really fast and so Satan told God you know he said why don't you take everything away from him God said no you don't tell me what to do so God says here's the deal you can take his stuff and you'll see that he won't turn I said you'll see that he won't turn you'll see that he won't turn and so everything that Job had was being taken away very slowly. Job became the huge talk of the town. Job became everybody's conversation piece because everybody admired Job. Everybody in their own private way probably wanted to be like Job, but they never understood the relationship that Job had with God. So when Job started losing everything and everybody was watching Job go through this trial of his life, Job started talking like we talk when we go through dark places. Job was living in faith, but now Job is living in faith while going through a trial. I know I'm talking to somebody who's listening tonight. Don't try to sidetrack the message. Just let God speak to you. He was going through a trial while trying to live by faith. Now, we would think that if we serve God, we wouldn't have to go through some of that. But God's going to show you in his word in a minute that it's just the opposite of that. It could be that you've been doing so much for God that now you deserve a trial to see if you were doing so much for God or if you were doing so much for yourself. And then Job started talking. Now, I'm going to read some scriptures to show you how we sometimes talk like Job and don't realize it. It's COVID-19. It's the trial of our lives. Everything is gloomy. Everything is going tough. We were fine before it hit. You had stocks, you had bonds, you had houses, you had land, you had money saved up, you had businesses, you had travel plans. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like overnight, everything in our lives started being shut down. Like, boom, 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 boom. God, what's going on? And then Job started talking. He still believed God. He still loved God. He thought God was his only friend. And listen to how Job started having a conversation with God. Because eventually, Job's friends were like, man, 
You need to go on and admit you did something wrong. Because as tight as you and God were, you wouldn't be going through all this. Unless you did something wrong. They were close friends. But they didn't understand that this was a deal made between Satan and God. And Job was being the model. In your life right now, whatever you're going through, are you, are you confident enough in God to be the model? And will the friends or people who have always been by you stay with you while God is using you instead of being the glory cloud? You become the trial killer in the fight of your life. No mas, no mas. That's what Satan is waiting to hear us say. So I want you to watch tonight and listen to how Job is talking as we teach the lesson. Now Job in the 19th chapter, the 7th verse, 7 through 12. He said, look at me. I shout murder and I'm ignored. He talked about us last night, talked to us with us last night, but I'm going to try to hold my cool and go on through with it. He said, I call for help and no one bothers to stop. God threw a barricade across my path. I'm stymied and he turned out all the lights. He, I'm stuck in the dark. He destroyed my reputation. He robbed me of my self-respect. Now Job is saying God is doing all of this. And in reality, we know it's Satan. See, we know it now. We know the other side of the story. But when you're going through it, you figure, I go to church, I give my tithes, I give my offering, I'm staying in the word. I got washed, I'm just like the sheet. I got the sheet on the stage. All of that, that's me. So surely God must be doing it. And this is his conversation. This is what he's talking. This is, I didn't write this. This was written way before you and I could even think about being conceived. And Job is saying, I'm, 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 he turned out all the lights. He didn't. Satan did. But look at how God's getting the hit for it. Why? Because if you really love God, that wouldn't be going on. He turned on all the lights. I'm stuck in the dark. He destroyed my reputation. He robbed me of my self-respect. He tore me apart piece by piece. I'm ruined. This is Job right there in your same Bible. Job 19, 7 through 12. I'm ruined. Then he's not finished yet. He's, he's in on God. Pretty heavy here. He yanked out hope by the roots. He's angry with me. Oh, how he's angry. He treats me like his worst enemy. He has launched a major campaign against me. This ain't small stuff. This is huge. He's using every weapon he can think of coming at me from all sides at once. Now, I hope somebody's not picking this message up at the wrong time and not understanding that we are talking about how Job was responding because he thought God was out to kill him. And when he was such a strong man of faith, he was such a strong believer of God and he was starting to lose everything around him. Did you realize that some of his friends started listening to him and started thinking, see, that right there is why I don't serve God. Tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about holding on. When you got all this going on, what you going to hold on to? We, we always keep this rope up in our sanctuary to those of you who are watching online right now. I'll wait till I get the picture here. We always keep this rope because about six and a half months ago when we went into COVID-19, I would walk in the building, and of course, no one is here just preaching to an empty building. Um, not realizing that God didn't allow, we didn't have celebrities and famous programs and all of that. All we had was a word. And to every one of you that are listening right now, every pastor who's tuning in, every leader who's listening, everybody who's saying, how is he going to handle the conversations tonight that God is giving us? Sometimes God says, I just want you to give people a symbol of hope. And, and, and this rope that hangs from the rafters of our building is here every time I walk in the building. And every time I look at it, I'm realizing God just gives us just a little something to hold on to. And, and when, you're, when you're drowning and when you just can't see tomorrow, God will just show you. You got my word. Just get you one verse. 
And that verse is just something to hold on to. And what's so cool about this, there's something to hold on to this rope. If I, if I can't climb it, because I'm you know, too weak to climb it, and then, then God will send something down for me. You, you, you missed that. Sometimes when you can't pull up, God will send down. I'll say that one more time. When you don't have the strength to pull up or hold up, God will send some power down. And when God starts to send his power down, every demon in hell will get angry. So now all of this that's going on in Job's life, we were reading here. So let me get to this other slide here. I want you to ask this question because this is like Job. Is God paying any attention to this at all? Job is going off the chain on God. He's going off on God like kids went off on parents, like new kids go off on parents. You see, old kids, we wouldn't talk. Mm -mm. But this is his father, and he's talking, he's talking about his father. But, but the question that I'm asking you tonight is, is God paying any attention to any of this? And Job is saying, all this stuff is going on around me. Come on, God. Where are you now? And I'm asking us tonight, do you think God was paying any attention to all of this angriness that's coming out of Job's mouth? And Job is not finished yet. Let me just read you a little bit more about what's happening because the devil is trying to get him. Let me wait till I get the slides off the board here. The devil is trying to get him to, to, to say what? No mas. That's all the enemy's trying to do. He's getting, trying to get him to say no mas, no mas. No mas. Somebody is wondering right now about you. Through all the junk in your life that you've gone through, why didn't you kill yourself? What made you stay and stand? You had the strength to do everything but take away your life. Maybe it seems like for some of you listening right now that that would be where the peace starts. Listen to me. I'm talking to you right now straight from the Holy Spirit. Don't let the enemy push you into no mas. See, in a minute, the bell's going to ring. Ding! And you'll be able to make it back to the corner. And you're going to get a break. And you're going to get some words of encouragement. And you got people in your corner, the Holy Spirit, the God, Father, and the Holy Spirit are sitting there. The Son, the Holy Spirit, they're sitting there giving you a word, a word. Yeah, like that's why we come to church because we get a word from God because God knows how much we've been beat up during the day and during the week. And the bell rings, ding, and you go sit down in the corner. But the problem with that fight was he quit before the bell ring. He just turned to him and go, I don't want no more. I'm good. Job's not finished talking yet. Let's, let's hear what else he says. He said, God alienated my family from me. That's Job talking. Took my family from me. All those years I served. Being around you every day, showing them how to worship, showing them, trying my best to do some stuff. I never said I was perfect, God. But you chose me and I worshiped you and you blessed me and you honored me. But then you took my family from me. This is what Job is thinking for somebody who's just tuning in. This is what Job was thinking. He said, everyone who knows me avoids me. And that's what you start feeling like right before. No mas. In the movie Rocky, Rocky was listening. And, and, and the, the Russian was beating him up. And all of a sudden, the voices started to alienate. Making him, the crowd made him feel even worse. But then he says, my relatives and friends have, not some of them, all of them left. House guests forget that I ever even existed. The servant girls treat me like a bum off the street. Look at me like they've never seen me before. These are the words coming out of Job's mouth when God is getting ready to bless him. But it doesn't look like it right now. It looks like this is the end because God is trying to get him. Job, just the bell's going to ring in a minute. It's going to ring. But before the bell rings, you're going to get hit with some stuff. And he's constantly not cursing and turning on God, just talking bad about God because the enemy is applying pressure to him. He said, I call my attendant and he ignores me. Look at all this. Negative, 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 negative. He ignores me even though I plead with him. My wife can't stand to be around me anymore. I'm repulsive to my family. 
even street urchins despise me. It's bad when homeless people don't want Hey, homeless people. When I came out, when I come out, they taunt and they jeer. It is amazing. Everyone I've ever been close to abhors me. My dearest loved ones reject me. I'm nothing but a bag of bones. My life hangs by a thread. And if that's what you just heard, then that is enough. If your life is hanging by a thread, then a thread is all God needs. Ooh, I'm so glad he said I had nothing to hold on to. If it, the, the, the one thing that when, when reading this passage and I got to that part right there when he says my life is hanging on by a thread, I said, God, now it almost, I almost missed this whole message, but God, and God, today God, you did your thing. Because all I needed was just a look. See, it, 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 I, you, I, I, I don't want to bother you wherever you are, but you can praise him in your living room or wherever you are. But let me tell you something. Out of all of this, all of this, y'all, we've been reading this for a minute. All of this, look at all this negative, all this bad, 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 bad. This whole thing, bad, bad. All these words coming out of the man of God. Bad, bad, bad. And God told me, I want you to find one word. See, see, one word. One word can clean this up. One word can let you know that God is still around. He said, my life hangs by a... Whoo. Re Reverend Mike, come here for a second. I want to use Reverend Mike here because we're officially in the building. We used to be in here just by ourselves. All I want to do right now is just do some. I have this crazy little example. I've always used it. And a lot of you pastors are listening. Y'all remember that. Here, I want y'all to look. You can't really see. Go just jump. Just, now just hold on to that. Just, you're just going to hold on to this and you're going to walk over there. Yeah, in front of that rope. There you go. So, okay, hold on. Stop right there. Now, now what y'all can't see, that's a thread. See, that's all Job had. Now, now I've used this before, so I want you to, but I want you to, I want you to get it now. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. And, and, and when this is all you have, it doesn't look like keep going, keep on going back over there. But if you just keep going, like you're going to go back. Then, okay, hold on. Stop right there. Then, and, and at the end of that thread, God said, oh, that's some strain. I mean, see, see, the, the thread was bad enough, but then you see the strain. But you keep on going. You got to keep on going. And then you're going to see the little rope. Hold on a second. Right there, you're thinking. And I don't know how long you can wrap that around yourself because I don't want you to. Yeah. You, you, and no, too tight. I don't want to cut your circulation off. And you got this rope. It's been there all the time. But it's not going to come till you leave the corner. You, you don't get it. You don't get it. Satan wants you to give up. Before you ever realize, oh, God still got something connected to everything. But right now, he said, I'm just hanging on by a thread. Keep going. And at the end of that thread, as crazy as it is, that thread, as thin as that thread is, is connected to this chain. Can, can, now, 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 you're probably thinking, how in the world is that thread strong enough to hold this chain? That's what got the devil puzzled right now. How are you holding on? Somebody ought to say right now, I'm hanging on by a thread. But I'm still here. That's you. That's you. That's you. Hang on. About three. Let's just take our eyes for a minute. Off our nice religious masks. And let's just be up front with God. And let everybody else know that might be listening. As you share this message with others that we all face times in our lives when we'd like to give up. It would just be so much easier. There are times when quitting church looks good. And there are times when giving up on our jobs 
look good. There are times when giving up on all the relationships that you've ever been around looks good. Time for you to take an overhaul of all your friendships. It looks good. Sometimes even you want to take a, a one, you know, even your marriage and your friend. I'm, I'm done with it. It looks better to just get out of this thing. There's this guy that was married to this woman like 50 years. And on their 50th anniversary, you know, you get a little, get a little old, kind of hard to hear. The woman been married with him 50 years. She could kind of barely hear a little bit. And he just sitting up in the chair and kind of whispered over in the, in the ear, you know, the one that had a little hearing in it. And, and he said, baby, after 50 years, I have found you tried and true. She said, I, I, can't, I can't understand. What would you say? He said, well, I, I said, after 50 years, I have found you tried and true. He said, say it a little louder, honey. He said, after 50 years, I, I found you tried and true. She said, is that right? Well, after 50 years, I'm tired of you too. <laughs> Just a thread, that was all it was. And sometimes now the enemy is wondering, how are we as the church of God all over the world, how is the body of Christ hanging on? See, this is about the only establishment now that's still going on. Everything else has been opened up. The church is still kind of closed because we don't know how to come together and not holler. But now we've kind of, you know what I mean. I mean, that's just part of our praise. I don't want anybody to take us for weird or anything. But I think if you ever watched a Christian, a Christian might look kind of weird. Because we kind of look a little schizophrenic. Because we don't act at church like we do at work. At work, you sitting down. And at work, when the boss is talking, you don't say a thing. But you come to church, and when the man start talking, you stand up. Sometimes you walk and look at other people. You start enjoying God's word and you start understanding you're in the word system. You forget you work in the world system. And so now we're here tonight simply because church, I want to remind us that we're here because we endure. And, and the Greek word for endure means to persevere and we stand against opposition. The fight between Roberto, Roberto Doran and Sugar Ray Leonard was a fight really of endurance. It includes the expectation of things getting better. And sometimes the answer to your prayers won't come immediately. I, I, I wish I could tell you that when you pray tomorrow, it'll be answered the same day. Or you'll see the manifestation the same day. You'll see what you prayed for the same day. But I can't tell you that. But that sometimes when you get delayed... We all know that it doesn't mean that God has quit. Doesn't mean that God has fallen off the throne. Job just couldn't figure. Man, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing all the right things. It's taken me a minute. But I'm doing all the right things, God. And I've always loved you. So why is it all happening? Daniel prayed for 21 days for God to give him the interpretation of a dream one time. But he refused to give up. God gave him the answer. God said, I answered you on the first day. But it took a minute for the answer to get to you. He persevered and expected God to come through regardless of how long it took. Endurance, church. Let's remember this. Endurance is not about just the friendship. It's the determination to stay with the problem until it's solved. And I know if you're tuning in now, you're going, oh, come on, get to some more hotspots. This is the hotspot. If there's anything that, uh, that can t change you, it's, it's God's word. Everything else can just entertain you and please you. So we need to understand right now, where are we in the midst of what this is? We're learning now how to endure. And endurance is the determination to stay with a problem until it is solved. You don't have to be the best. Oh, my gosh. Aren't we sad we learned that one last? All our lives somebody had you trying to be the best and you almost killed yourself competing with someone who was never in your class. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the biggest. 
I remember when we started our church and people started calling us mega church. I, I used to say, don't, don't say that to us because I don't think God's ever made any church that wasn't mega. Every church to God is big. And boy, when COVID hit, I was so glad one Sunday. And this is, I mean, I even sound right spiritually to say, but I was so glad one day when I woke up and everybody the church had like six people. I go, now was mega. Was it God's word or was it the size of the building? Do we focus on how many people or do we focus on how many souls were saved? We will never know how many people the church is blessed. You have to learn though, not how big it is, not how much of the best you have, but can you endure and you're going to have to endure if you're going to have to make the devil say, okay, you picked the fight, but you picked an opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been slammed. I've been weak. I've been bruised. I've been knocked down. But if you just study my history with God, you, you'll know that long as I live and trouble rise, I always hasten. I can't wait to get to it. And I used to think I had to get to church. Now God has told me I have to get to my knees and I got to get on my face and I got to worship right here. I can't make it to the church because by the time I get there, I might say no mas, no mas. But if I can just, if I can just reach him right now, and so now the enemy can see you as a worthy opponent. Remember, this is not the battle between Job and his friends. It's not the battle between Job and the people in his community. This was about Satan saying, I can push this man to the edge and make him turn on you, God. And then he had three strong, supportive friends that said, Job, come on, dog. Won't you just admit you did something wrong, man, so we can go back and go fishing? You go, oh, you going to hold out on the story, Job? Look at You lost everything. It, it, it's, come on, man. Be obvious. Just break it down. Be honest. And they walked away from him because they said, we're not going down with you, Job. When you keep getting up in adversity's face, finally the devil's going to say, oh, shoot. He's back again. This joker's back. He, he's got that word of God in his hand. And you take that word of God. And Satan's going to say, there he got, he's got that testimony in his mouth. But he got that word in his hand. See, as long as the enemy sees. See, you can't even fight legally in a boxing match without gloves. Now, this new street fight thing they got going on. I don't even like to watch that. That just looks savage. But a boxing match, what makes it legal is that both of you have on gloves. And when the devil sees that you come with your gloves on, now that means you are legally fighting. And what he hates about it, though, is when you stand up with this word of God right here, he, he, he has a, he, he's, he's saying, I got, if he's got that Bible in his hands, he's got that word in his heart, that means he's got a praise coming out of his mouth. And, and if he's got a praise, every time he praises, I have to stop. See, yo, 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 listen to me now. When you praise God, Satan has to stop. So how is he getting so close? Maybe we got so comfortable that, that we started asking for stuff and stopped just praising God. Father, I just love you. Lord, I just thank you. Satan says, I'm just waiting on you to shut up so I can pounce on you. Let me catch you without a praise in your mouth. He kept telling God, I'm trying to get to him. But every time I get to your children, they are sitting there praising and singing them old jive church songs and quoting those scriptures. Can you ever be sure that you won't give up? And the answer was right, I mean, the answer was just right at the door, just, just right at the door. There are some who quit just days before. I mean, just days before, not your blessing. Your blessing come while you're fighting and you're hurt. I'm talking about your miracle. It was, it was just about to happen. The miracle was just about to happen. Satan said, since I know I can't beat you, I got to make you quit. I'm not, no, that's not in the contract to win. I got to make you quit. The deal between Satan and God was not that Job get blessed. The deal was I can make him quit. I can put so much pressure on him. I can make him quit. That's the deal that Satan still tries to make. It's like some people who go to college. You go four years of college and you drop out three months before graduation. And your mom and dad, if they paid anything, no, you're going to go back. 
If you don't do anything but get a D plus, you're going you're gonna to go back. And it's not very smart to go to college all those years and then you quit two months before graduation. And that's like some of us who have been walking with the Lord for a long time now. I don't know about you, but I've been walking with the Lord a long time. And my walk with God has not always been a comfortable walk. It's been a walk with a limp. It's been a walk with some pain. It's been some walk, I'll be real honest, it's been some walk with some doubt. Some guy, God, did you call me to do this? And, and I'm guaranteeing you that almost every time there have been times when I just thought, okay, this is as far as God wants me to go. And then the miracle that God needed to produce has been just around the corner. And let me tell you why. Satan gets very terrified of God's children when they're determined to keep swinging. And there's nothing but fog and cold water in your face. I don't know how many of you have been in a deep fog. I'll let you take these notes here. I don't know how many of you have ever been in a deep, deep fog. You cannot see anything. But I don't know if you can hear my voice as you're reading this note that I have on the screen. If you're just tuning in before you tune out, please don't tune out. But if you can just hear my voice, it's amazing if you've ever been in a fog. You would think that if you were ever in a deep fog, you would just stop. But there's something about being in a deep fog that just tells you, just slow down. But wherever you're going, it's still there. And, 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 and just because you can't see it doesn't mean you have to stop moving. And Satan gets terrified that when any of God's children are determined to keep on swinging, despite the fog and the cold waters. He's terrified of a guy like Simon who's willing to get out of the boat and walk on the water by faith. Satan's not really afraid of anybody who's in a pool of despair. Now, let me tell you this. He is not afraid of you at all when you say something like, I'm in this mess because of somebody else. I'm in this mess because of what some other people did. I'm in this mess. No, no, Satan's not afraid of you then. No, 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 no. Because now you're, you're pitiful. You're down. But you got to take the word of God. Put it right under the devil's throat. You just imagine putting it right there, right in the throat, right in the throat. Right in his throat. And said, I'll be here tomorrow, chump. Same time, same place. Same station. So just get used to seeing my face. Because I'm going to stick this sword in your gut. Anything else you say to Satan, he's not really listening to it. And he'll bluff you. And during all of this COVID that we've been through and all this crisis that the world has been going through, Satan's been throwing a bluff. He's throwing a bluff and he's, 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 he's frightened a lot of people away. My challenge to you is wherever you are, stay in the word of God. Stay in your church. Stay where God has put you. It's illegal for a boxer to lead a ring during the fight. <laughs> you got to stay in that ring, man. Boom, they hit you against the rope. Just use the rope to bounce off. You may get hit again, boom, but you're still in that ring. God gave us a ring. God gave us a place to be, and God expects us to be there. Now, a lot of people talk about how tough they are and how tough they are with the church, and I'm with you. you know, but when trouble comes, it'll make you say, I got to step out of the ring. That's what I used to love about wrestling. I don't know. I don't watch wrestling like I used to, um, but, but I saw wrestling the other day. Nobody in the audience. How you wrestle with nobody in the audience? Y'all just sitting there match talking to each other. Throw me on the ground, all right? The whole thing about wrestling was the fans. It was all for the fans. And at some point, they had to determine, can we just wrestle if nobody's watching? The best fight you're going to have with Satan will be when nobody's watching. All the fans are gone. The best way for you to know if you qualify is when you fight that joker and nobody's watching. If, if, if you were the devil and, and you kept, though, if you kept getting, getting run through with the sword of the spirit every time you, that a person picked on you, every time that a person got tired, if, you, if they just kept sticking that throat in you, that sword in you, this, this right here. What are they going to do tomorrow? Going to church? Ah, oh, y'all go to church too much. That first thrust of the word, it may not bother you too much. Sometimes people throw the Bible up. You know, Lord, protect me. Okay, eh. But after that third or fourth time, it starts getting a little irritating to the enemy. By that fifth or sixth time, it gets downright painful to the Satan when you start putting that word on him too much. And so, 
Whatever he's made saying, I'm going to mess your life up. I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to separate you from anything that ever loved you. It's going to be because he's, not, he's tired of you putting that word on him. So what do, we, what do we need? We need, we need, we need more water. You got a whole lot of sheets and you got, you got a lot. See, now we can see that those of you that are just tuning in, we started out and we were trying to fill, trying to clean all these clothes with just a little bit of water. I mean, the water was good. But it wasn't enough. And boy, we found ourselves as a nation being drenched, separated from church. How is the church lasting so long? I thought by now all churches would be just closed up and people not coming. We have so much word. We have so much water in us. Water got cold, but it's still water. The word might get cold, but it's still the word. And, and Satan can, he has to honor God's word. Let, let, me, let me give you a little bit of word right quick. Because 2 Timothy kind of tells us about why we're still sticking around here. Because I don't want you to think I'm just giving an opinion. The Holy Spirit will always give me a word. He said, you therefore must, this is you. You is the me in here. You must. Now, he didn't say you could possibly. He said you must. This is a command. This is one of them thou shalt and thou shalt not. You don't command. You must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus. If, if you're going to be a good soldier, you must endure hardships. Because he says, in this world, I'm sorry, but you're going to have some tribulation. But you must endure hardship. And if the church is going to help right now, to help other people to realize that um, we're going to have to last during troubled times. I, I, I'm mighty afraid that at some point we may have tried to be a little nice and not teach people how to endure hardships. Because our, our society may avoid that, you know. You don't want to teach people to be like that. Just, just let them do what they want to do. And then... That's when somebody calls and say, you ever felt like killing yourself? No, I'm, 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 I'm going to wait till the bell rings and get some more instructions. And sometimes if too much is asked of us, y'all, I'm talking about hardships. We fold our arms and we quit. Can you do this? Can you do that? <laughs> Ooh, you want me to do everything. And it's only because maybe you have given signs that God keeps giving you everything. So we, we must endure hardships. I want everybody to, to hear me there. But if the church is going to change the devil's mind, it's going to have to learn hardships as a soldier. And there are times when you're on this battlefield, and it's not nice, it's not sweet. We have times you don't feel like going any further. But we still need to press on. Listen to me. All of you that are listening at home, we still need to press on. Let me remind you that you're in a fight. A lot of men and women in the church don't want to get in a battle. Which I just don't want to fight. I just don't want to fight. And I'm talking about with the enemy, not with other people. That proves that Satan wins when he can get you to fight against other people. Now he can call you out. God has already called you. He called you as a symbol of hope. He calls you as a symbol of love. Satan's after everything you believe. And sometimes it looks like Satan won that round. God said that was just a round, not the end of the fight. You missed it. I don't know how many of you ever felt like Satan won that round. You, you messed up. You did something you weren't supposed to do. And, it's, ah. and God said, ding, time for another round. And you're still making it because his word kept talking to you. Sometimes people in Christianity, let me just say how I, we, we kind of learned it. Sometimes we want to be in the parade. You've been to a parade, those, you know. Uh, my stepbrother, before he passed, my stepbrother was in the, um, was in the uh, Marines. It was in the, he was in the Marines. And, uh, you know, when a, when, a, when, a, when a soldier's in a parade, man, that makes everybody want to be a soldier. We used to watch parades growing up, you know. Ooh, I want to be one of those Marines. Because we saw this part of it. You know, just, ooh, look at him. 
And I'm sure I'm not in style. I'm, I'm, my stuff is just broke up. But, but, but they would be there in the Marines. And that's why a lot of people signed up for it because the uniform looked good. It was sharp and the white cap. And they were, I mean, just, do, and then, oh man, you know that first time you heard the guys do the Pledge of Allegiance at your pep assembly at, at high school and, and ROTC guys, they come in, hey, 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 huh, huh, huh. even bad kids in the auditorium got quiet. <laughs> you know, because when the bad kids get quiet, there's something going on. Hey, 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 hey. Huh? And then you know what was really impressive is when you had like a friend of yours in school and he was bad, but when he got on ROTC, he was good. And you're like, how's Dwayne on ROTC, man? And he would just, hey, 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 to the flag, United States of America. But, but, and then they get through, and then they went, went and, and you would, you could boo and mess with everybody, but you don't mess with those military ROTC boys, even if y'all rode on the same bus. They finish with that pledge, and they take that flag, and they be. And then they would take that flag and put it in that flag. And they went down the stairs. <laughs> and you said, that's what I want to be. I want to be where. And, and you, everybody in the auditorium signed up to be on ROTC. <laughs> and then you went to ROTC training. <laughs> Coach had them boys out there, sergeant, lieutenant. I don't know what the titles were. Before the school bus got there, they running laps. Like, man, what y'all doing with ROTC? You're like, no, I'm good. I don't want to be in that because, see, we wanted the suit, but we didn't want the trouble of training to get to that point. There is a time when you wear that uniform out in public. You wear it, and it's good. It's good for a picture, but there's some hardship that goes along with that. And so sometimes people see the pretty part of being a Christian. They see the great part of being a Christian. They see all of this on the outside. But folk don't know the trouble you endure just to put on that joy, just to put on that praise. They don't know. They don't know how many times you've fallen. They don't know how many times you've failed. They don't know how many times you were about to say, no mas, no mas. You were about to turn and God said, get back, turn back around. And when you turn around, it's like God didn't like you because when you turn around, pow, you got hit with another one. You were just about to quit. That's why one of the saddest things that's happened with COVID is people can't see our smile. Because that's just one of our signatures, y'all. That's this to us. I smile. So now, you got to have your face covered and still wear your joy. And so this is what God has to say to us tonight as we come to this last part of holding on. In the word, he said, be prepared. Ephesians 6, 14 through 17. Please hear me. Please hear God. Please hear God. Thank you for being with us tonight, but please hear God. Please hear God. He said, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. I didn't write this. He said, take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has Issued. Listen, key word. Who issued the weapon? Every weapon that God has issued. Because Satan is going to sabotage this fight. God has given you some weapons. So that when it's all over, but the shouting. Because that ain't over. When it's all over, you'll still be on your feet. So what are the weapons that God has given us? Truth, 
righteousness, peace, faith, salvation. These are more than words. These are more than words. He said, not only do I want you to take these weapons, because you didn't sign up for the parade. You signed up for the fight. And sometimes when the parade is over, we say, no, no, I, I, I'm done with it now. He said, these are more than words. But you got to come to, now watch me throw this in. You got to come to Monday school. That's what it kind of said. You don't see it in there, right? Why? To learn how to apply them. If I gave you a car and didn't teach you how to drive it, I'm giving you a tool to kill yourself and other people. And every time Satan sees that you're going after trying to help someone else live, even if it's, if it's just straight word of God, and it's like, he's, he's, he's after you. And that's what makes us say, you know what, man, I'm tired. I'm, I'm good. You know what? Forget this. this is, and we've all had, that's what makes no mas happen. Because now you're trying to help others learn how to live this life. And he said, take all these weapons. Take all these weapons. Take all these weapons. Take all these weapons that I've given you. Okay, I've, I'm, God said, I've given you this. You can't fight the devil with nothing else. If you, if you stop using these, you're going to start fighting people. Then you're going to fight according to the world system, and I won't back you. Let me, let me sit on the step and say that. If you start fighting according to the world system, if you do, I won't back you. If you fight according to the word system, I got you. I'm not going to guarantee you won't get knocked out. I'm not going to guarantee your nose won't get blooded. I'm not going to guarantee that you almost wish you were dead, but I will guarantee that you will win. So, I've given you these weapons. I've given you these weapons. Stand on the truth of my word. Stand in your righteousness because you are mine. Stand in peace because that's a part of the world system. You got faith, you got the shield, and you're saved. These are more than words. I'm going to close this now, but I had to show you. He said you're going to need them throughout your life. Because God's word is an indispensable weapon. That should be an S right there. Okay, God's word is an indispensable weapon. So of all the things that Satan is apt to get from you, he wants to take this away. But when I was a boy in school, kids always laughed at me walking down the hall because they said, boy, every time you see Ricky, he got the Bible. The Bible was bigger than me. I didn't understand then like I understood now. It was just something that I was trying to learn to like to read. And I thought that I could, I thought that's, I just liked the Bible being my uniform. I needed something, I needed something to hold on to. Everybody had a thing. I didn't have a thing. You know, everybody had a thing. They had, you know, either little faded mustaches or, you know, baby hair, height or charm and all that. And I just had the word of God. But that was enough for me to hold on to. Now, I want those of you who are listening to me to understand two things. My first challenge tonight was to come to you and offer you a word of hope. Um, we don't manipulate people in Jesus. I'm not making you some side deal. I was, I'm telling you, when you sign up for this, you're just going to get shot at. You, you didn't sign up for the parade. The parade, when you see Christians talk about, oh, I got this car, glory to God, hallelujah. I got this car. Yeah, man, I got this job. I got this promotion. Thank you, Jesus. I got this. See, that's the parade part. Nobody's ever invited into the room where we cry, where we lose it. And then before you know it, you're starting to fight totally with the world system. And, and, and let me say this. Satan doesn't run out of gas. He can outlast you. Yeah. And what he's hoping is that this next round, you'll go, no mas. No mas. And God is saying, no, 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 no. Get back to the corner. 
And that's why we fight the good fight of faith. So right now while you're listening, you're going, wow, Pastor Rush, that inspired me. You're going to hear, see, think, and rediscover a whole, a whole different level of love for God when you start seeing him deliver you through things. But man, in that process, you want to quit this. And it's like every struggle of your life is going to come. Why are you a Christian? You see, everybody else, I was talking to a Christian yesterday. He said, everybody else can do this, 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 and nobody ever talks about it. But when you're a Christian, you can be late to church and somebody's going to look at you. You can tell, you know, oh, she's speaking tongue. Why is she late? You know, <laughs> that's, just, that's, just, that's, just, that's just part of it. So I want you right now, if you want the Lord in your life, if you don't want to go to hell, and I know all the sarcastic talk that people do when you talk about hell. But guys, this is my calling. This is, this is what God has called me to do. I don't have any other proof except the millions of changed lives that God has changed through the word of God. Um, that words have come out of my mouth that came straight from his word. And tonight, hopefully you read something that you were like, wow, never saw that. But I want you to do something right now. If you want the Lord in your life, I want you to just stop right where you are and wherever you're listening. Even if you're, yeah, I don't know about this stuff, man. It's okay. What if God orchestrated everything crazy going on right now just to get you to listen? You came so full of doubt in God. You came so frustrated, but you heard him tonight. And all he wants you to know is he loves you. You don't have to love anything else and anybody else or what anybody else has done or said. He loves you. How are you able to hold on right now? Because it gives you peace. Eh. Stop, being, stop admiring Christians so much. And start trusting God. Because, man, it, it just gives you peace. Right? Don't admire us. Because sometimes we, we, you don't see. We throw our arms down like this. And bam, we get hit with a punch. And just the punch will make you put your guards back up. God says, if you fight with my word, I'll be with you. You fight according to the world and get out in that blood fight. I can't back you on that. So right now, if you want him in your life real quick, let's just do this. You, just looking at me. All I want you to do, you don't have to, you don't have to, you can bow your head if you want to. If you don't want to be distracted by anything, you can do whatever you want to do. It's the words of your mouth and the confession of your heart. That's what the Lord is looking for. So here's what you say. Say, Lord, I heard you tonight. And I didn't know that I was going to have a chance to receive you in my life. But you broke this word down so simple. Now I understand the fight that the church goes through. The body of Christ all over the world. And God, I want to be on a winning team. Not to be in the parade. But to fight the good fight of faith. And if you'll have me, Lord. I want to be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for revealing your word to me Thanks for watching and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? 
visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.